Welcome back everybody to the Artist DM. In these next few episodes, we're going to be diving deep down into the cold under dark and heating things up. What's up fellow crafters? In the last episode, I said today I'd be making a modular fungal forest. However, I did not anticipate the flood of ideas and inspiration I would get, so I've decided to expand this into a three-part series. Today, in the first part, we'll be making violet fungus miniatures. They're super cheap and pretty easy to make. In the following episode, I'm gonna show you how to structure and texture the four other fungal shapes of the fungal forest. And finally, the third episode is going to be entirely dedicated to painting, where I'm going to try and tackle bioluminescence and experiment with glow-in-the-dark paint. Although I'm pretty sure the results are going to be bad with the glow-in-the-dark paint, but it's worth a shot. So now that you know what's ahead, let's head over to the workbench and work on these violet fungi. Start by drawing rough estimations of the shapes you want. For this project and the rest of the fungal forest, blue XBS foam is going to be ideal because it yields to heat better and thus is easier to sculpt in the manner that we are going to do so. Either cut out your drawn shapes or take them over to the Proxon cutter. I cut my shapes out of 2 inch XBS foam, so now I'm just cutting down to more appropriate sizes. To start rounding the shape, I begin with four 45 degree cuts down the corners. Then a shallow taper on the bottom. Then where I made each of those 45 degree cuts, I make shallower cuts along the edges, further rounding out the piece. With the piece more rounded, I can begin to see the shape that I want, so I just begin carving away until I'm satisfied with the final result. At this point, the shape is very rigid and geometric, but after we do the texturing, it will be much more rounded out. Now for that unique texturing. Clear away as much hot glue from the nozzle as you can. And begin to plunge your nozzle straight into the XPS foam. This creates these little circular indentations. I try and alternate the circles as much as I can but the pattern isn't extremely important. As you're making these, you want to preserve the walls in between the circles. Go ahead and continue this all the way around the entire piece. Now to add some irregularity and variance to the pattern. Go in with your nozzle at an angle and begin collapsing walls in combinations of two, three, and sometimes four circles. You can also add some asymmetry to the single circles by reinserting the nozzle and moving it around at varying angles. Once all your pieces are textured, you can move on to adding the substructure to the stem. To 
do this, use your nozzle to make an indentation in the bottom of the mushroom cap. Taper off the top of the stem substructure. Hot glue these two pieces together and add some pins for durability. Now to prep the piece for basing. Apply a gob of hot glue to the bottom of the stem substructure and then press it down on a piece of parchment paper to flatten it out. For the base, I used these cheap wooden bases you can find on Amazon. I'll provide a link in the description below. You could easily get away with using cardstock, however. To make a strong bond, I use the baking soda and super glue method to connect the piece to the base. The layer of hot glue protects the stem from the super glue, and if a little bit of super glue gets on the styrofoam, it's okay. Keep in mind this is only the substructure of the stem, so don't worry about any unsightly spots. To make the root-like tendrils, I roll toilet paper mixed with water and glue in the palm of my hand, and then place them on the miniature. To further secure the tendrils and to blend them all together, I cut a thin strip of TP. Holding off on the glue for now, I just dampened it with a spray bottle full of water. Work gingerly here. It's really easy to slide off all the tendrils. Trust me, I learned the hard way. I then apply white glue to the outside. I then carefully shape it with a brush, adding depth to the indentations between the tendrils and getting rid of any unsightly ridges. The sculpting tool is also handy here. And with that, you're done with the stem structure. To make the tendrils that deliver the rotting touch attack, I use stem wire. You can find this in the flower arranging section at Walmart. It's about $1.30 for a pack. Cut the wire at varying lengths, some long enough to extend beyond the tip of the mushroom cap and some shorter. When bending the tendrils into shape, I have the monster manual nearby for reference. I then straighten out the wire where it's going to connect to the mushroom cap. I 
repuncture the foam and then apply a thin layer of hot glue to the tendrils, then insert them into the piece. On the exposed tips of the stem wire, don't forget to secure that thread with a little bit of hot glue. Once you're satisfied with the tendrils, you're done with the structure. The colors I chose were a dioxazine purple, an antique white, and a true red for the dry brushing steps. Having a pure white nearby helps to accelerate brightening the colors. I base coat the mushroom cap in the dioxazine purple and then lighten it up to paint the tendrils. It took me two coats of the dioxazine purple to get the color where I wanted it. The paint was settling in the recesses, so I took a small brush and spread it out and painted the high points. For the first dry brushing, I lightened the purple and hit the high points. I then grabbed a smaller brush and hit the recesses as well. I then continued dry brushing, adding more red and white to the purple each time. To finish the tendrils, I dry brushed the entire length with a reddish purplish hue. I then dry brushed the top with a white color, applying more paint at the very top and lessening it at the lower upper region. I did the same with the original purple from the base coat at the bottom of the tendrils. This gives it a really nice gradient that I think looks good. And finally apply your washes. For the tendrils and the mushroom caps I applied a brown wash to make it look a bit more organic and not so colorful. As you can see from the picture a little too much wash settles in the recesses so I went through with a dry brush and wicked out the extra. For the stem structure, I decided that a mixture of brown and black looked best. Once the wash is dried, I went in with a fine tip brush and painted the base black, like a standard miniature base. I ended up really liking these minis. While they aren't the most amazing thing I've made, they are dirt cheap to make, do a good job of representing the monster manual art, and most importantly, can easily be made by beginners with basic tools. If you like what you saw here, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, be sure to check back in for next episode where I show you how to make four more fungi. But until then, thanks for watching and keep on crafting.